What's going on, guys? Francis Volpe here. We are back with the Front and Center podcast, and today we got our man, Mario the Monk Trotta, who is got an incredible journey of how where he started to where he is now. Um, big in the marketing game for LOs and real estate agents, but we wanted to come together as a collaboration to really talk about what is going on in the state of social media marketing, digital marketing, all things marketing. Um, we were having an amazing conversation off camera. Wanted to bring that on camera. Probably should have had it rolling. But, you know, Mario, I'm going to... all the time, right? It does. I, you, I wish we had a camera rolling 24-7, 365. That'd be phenomenal content. But I'm going to give you floor, the floor for a second just to kind of hit on, like, who you are, you know, tell the audience about your journey, and then we'll just start, you know, going back and forth with some things that uh, I think are important for us to hit on. Yeah, I think the first thing that we should do is address the fact that both of us were two marketing agencies mm -hmm. in a very small community that have never looked at each other as competition, yep. right? We have collabed on projects before. You've sent me work before. I've sent you work. Mm -hmm. And I think the mindset right there mm -hmm. is something that people need to, uh, to understand because we help each other, right? We know, and it's, it's collaboration over competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge that, and that we, we're actually, we're walking the walk. We, yes. we don't look at each other as competition. And we're here right now and we're gonna make some content together and you're gonna put it out on yours, I'm gonna put it out on mine. Mm -hmm. And not afraid for either of our audiences to see each other or to yeah. learn about another person's business. It's about right? adding value, right. right? That I think that's the business that we're both in is also adding value from ourselves and what we know, but also helping the clients that we work with to add value as well. But kind of give your background a little bit. You know, it's always good to have a starting point of where you were and how you got to this spot that you're in right now. I, uh, I was an LO, top producing loan officer for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, I was living La Vida Loca, man. We had a good life, good living, making a good living. And I, I remember when my daughter was born, I started a journal. Because I just, I never, I always felt like I was going to die of stress. Like at any moment. That's how I felt being a loan officer and, and dealing with the everyday stuff that comes with being an yeah. LO, right? Um, so I always wrote down, you know, my day. Uh, every time I got home, I would write down in the journal just a little something to my daughter at the time she, she was born. And I remember I looked back a year later and I was skimming through this journal and I realized like, yo, I missed the biggest moments in this kid's life. I wasn't there for her first tub, first time she said a word. I, I was just, all I did was work. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of stuck with me. And then by chance, um, I, I had reached out to a friend, Paul of mine, my best friend, athlete, always in shape. And I was really out of shape at the time, similar to where I'm at right now. But <laughs> Uh, I was like, listen, can you just, you know, maybe help me uh, come up with some meal plans, a workout, something that I'll actually do. Yeah. And he was nice enough to agree. And like, we, we, he was, uh, I want to call it maybe an accountability coach for a few weeks. Um, one day we're in Mount Vernon, we just finished the workout and we run into a friend of ours, mm -hmm. this kid, Sean Smith. And uh, he, this dude's like all ripped up, he's all jacked. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You look mm -hmm. amazing. And he's like, I'm in an infomercial for Insanity. I don't know if you remember. Yes, Insanity I do. Sean I Tate? do, yep. Uh, he's like, I'm in an infomercial for that, and it's just pretty awesome. We're like, oh, what, you know, what does that entail? What's that mm -hmm. like? So he said, every day I go down to Rockefeller Center. I'm in a gymnasium with 500 people, and we do his workout for the program. Uh, but even cooler than that is when I leave at the end of the day, I have five meals prepared waiting for me, right? All my meals are packaged mm -hmm. and done. And every two weeks, I meet with their nutritionist to do body compositions. You mm -hmm. know, they'll measure fat, muscle, make mm -hmm. sure fat is down, muscles up. Yep. And we're like, yo, that sounds actually amazing. He's like, well, it's cool because everybody's incentivized. The people who have the best results get to be in the infomercial, plus they get like a $5,000 bonus for wow. doing this. Okay. So we're like, uh, you know, that's that sounds amazing. It sounds like an awesome program to go through. Talked for another 10 minutes, and that was it. We went back to my house. And he, he, he calls me and he's like, hey, were you guys really serious in being interested in what we were doing? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, what are you doing right now? We're like, we're just hanging out. He's like, can I come by and tell you some things or talk about it? So he came, comes by and you know, by the end of that night, we're like, yo, let's launch a pilot. Let's get 10 people, our, 10 of our friends, 
Sean, you do the training. Mm -hmm. Let's get somebody to cook our meals. Let's get a gym to work out in, and let's find a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And within a month, we had it all done. We were working at a Phoenix wow. uh, gym in Tuckahoe. Yeah. We had a chef to prepare our meals, and we had a nutritionist. Wow. Um, and within two months, we met every day for 60 days. And within two months, all of our results were insane. Like, really? I dropped, I went from, I'd probably drop 10, 12% body fat. Wow. Um, you know, Paul, who's already in shape, his muscle went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And we put all these pictures on Facebook, and then everybody just started hitting us up and being like, what is this? We want to do it. So yeah. we're like, hey, maybe we have a business here. He was a head, he was a... Uh, in hedge funds at the time, a trader making you know five six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So we both had a really good, uh, we we're both making a really good living, but we just weren't fulfilled. Fulfilled, I yeah. guess you could say. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't see like an exit strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I don't write loans, yeah, how am I getting paid when I'm seventy five years old? Yeah. So we decided to uh, to launch a company, and we went. We raised three hundred thousand dollars, and we opened up our first location above Iron Tomato in White Plains. Oh wow! Right here. Yeah, right over here. Yeah. And uh, you know, within I don't know a couple months of doing that, we're just like, this is really hard to be both places. Like, we can't both have our full time jobs, but we also weren't making enough money to make up for what we were doing. Right? I was literally going from making thirty thousand a month to barely making two thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. but dude i was happy yeah i was loving it i was fired up my creativity was mm -hmm. uh through the roof and i just felt alive again i mean didn't work out well as far as family when i went through a divorce mm -hmm. and not just because of that other things as well mm -hmm. uh but it was just a really hard time and we did this for a couple of years and we just couldn't seem to you know when when your best friends and you make some common business mistakes, like not having roles outlined and things like that. Uh, it becomes really tough when you're not making money, right? Of course. And our vision was kind of just fuzzy. We didn't agree on where the company was going to go. So I'm like, okay, I am going to go back to being a loan officer, which mm -hmm. is what I knew, where I made my money. And I'm like, I'm going to... I'm going to implement everything I just learned in this company. Because remember, when you start a company mm -hmm. and you have no money, Who's doing your SEO? Who's building your website? Who's doing your social media? Nobody. You yep. learn how to do all these things. Yep. So, you know, I, I learned about automation and CRMs and whatnot. And I was like, I'm just going to go back into the mortgage business. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, I do a buyout with them. Um, I go back into the mortgage business and I'm fucking delusional in thinking that like everybody <laughs> who I was working with was going to be like, oh, you're back in the business. Here's, Here's all these referrals, yeah. right? Uh I had been replaced at day one. So I had to reinvent myself. And mm -hmm. at the time, my manager was like, yo, you guys need to be on social. Mm -hmm. It was almost like being forced on us. So I'm like, all right. I did this exercise. Uh, and I, at the, So I did this exercise by Jay Shetty. It was like uh, finding your passion. Mm -hmm. And I, it was a, a game changer for me. And I, I've probably given out this exercise to over 100 people. And I've shared my journal with them as well. But basically what it does is it breaks down... What do you love and you're good at? What do you love and you're not good at? What don't you love but you're good at? What don't you love and you're not good at? Yeah. Those basic four categories. Mm -hmm. So in the, I, I'm i good at but don't love was mortgages, uh, everything I was doing. Like I understood the business. Yep. What I didn't love, uh, what I did love but I wasn't good at was graphic design, coaching, you know, mm -hmm. all those things. And that was it. I put it in a journal. I closed it. Fast forward two years. I'm getting paid to do all of these things that I, I had. And, and here was the strategy. I was gonna take what I knew, which was mortgages, and I was gonna take my passion for graphic design and merge the two. Okay. So I was gonna come up with designs that spoke about mortgages, and I'm gonna bypass realtors. I never wanna work with the realtor again because up until that time, my relationship with the realtor was, hey, I'm gonna give you business, and in exchange, I want you to pay for my open houses, yeah. you know, pay for my marketing, and it was shit I didn't want to do. Yeah. But in reality, they were they were the ones with value, right? Mm -hmm. They were giving me business, and what they were asking for in return, I didn't want to do. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to bypass them. I'm going to create content, go directly to the consumer. Okay. And that's not how it happened. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do understand that sometimes, you know, when you set sail uh, for something, it, things don't work out the way you think, so you yep. have to be able to pivot. And what happened was, 
realtors started coming to me and being like, I love your content. Yep. Can you help me with mine? Yep. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting with realtors all the time talking about things I love and now adding value to them, yep. right? Uh, so it became a totally different relationship. And now I started getting so close to these realtors, they're, they wanted to give me business, but I had to decide, do I want mortgage business from them mm -hmm. or do I want marketing business from them? Because I can't <laughs> ask for both. No. I can't be like, pay me for marketing and give me deals. Yeah. And I went all in on the marketing and I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I didn't know what services I was going to offer. So for the first year and a half, I basically did what anybody asked me to do. Yeah. I had a hundred different services. Um, and that's how it started. That's how I became kind of a marketer. And I knew real estate. Uh, when I first started doing marketing, what I tried to do was outsource a lot of work, right? Yep. People were coming to me and then they needed designers, video yep, people. Yep, yep. And, and I tried just making the introductions, right? Yes. And it didn't work because I was trying to get loan officers to go from zero to 60 and be like, yo, here's your designer, send them content. And they would do nothing with it. Yeah. They wouldn't move forward. So the designers would call me back. I, I haven't heard from these people. The clients never complained because they knew it was on them. But I realized that there was too much of a gap, too mm -hmm. much for them to have to do. And they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So that's when I came up with services that were like, hey, I do everything for you. All you literally have to do for almost all my services is either show up one time mm -hmm. or show up one time per month, depending on yep. the service. Yep. I do the rest. Yep. And that's how I got into marketing for realtors and LOs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's been super lucrative, lucrative and it's been fun. And the thing is, I've met so many people on oh, Instagram yeah. and on it's social. It's insane. Um, I have friends now from kind of all over the, the world, mm -hmm. right? I have, I have people in Italy, Australia, yeah. Greece, uh, India. It's just, it connected me with everyone. And I was always kind of good at finding someone's talent. So a lot of the people I connected with, they had something to offer. And I, I helped a lot of people monetize yeah. the things that they were doing as hobbies. And it was well, pretty awesome. And it's an amazing story. You know, I, I've heard it before, but like, you know, when you put a camera in front of someone's face, they kind of tell it differently. They get into more, you know, some finer details. But it just sounds like from the get go, you were an entrepreneur, right? Like that, like being an LO, you're your own business, right? At the end of the day, you're responsible for getting deals, closing deals. And then you went into marketing and you brought up a great point was that, you know, you were making great money and a great, had a phenomenal lifestyle as an LO. You started this other business and you started going from making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month to maybe making two grand and I think that for just entrepreneurs that may watch this or people that are thinking about getting into business because as we're seeing these younger generations are not corporate minded they're like let me make TikTok content let me make YouTube content let me make Instagram content or whatever it may be I can make money with myself maybe take brand deals but I can grow something to where then I can start businesses underneath my brand. And I think people have to realize is that entrepreneurship is going to kick you in the teeth. You know, you're going to make yeah, decisions 100%. that are going to either make or break you. And I always say, you know, that first three years when you decide to start your own business, you're going to see, you know, you might see an uptick, but it's going to challenge the shit out of you. It's going to make you realize that Am I really made out for this? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a nine to five. Some people enjoy going to work, enjoy what they do. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if you really want to be responsible and accountable for your own well-being, entrepreneurship is the route, but understand that it's not an easy route. There's no, there is absolutely nothing easy about it, right? And you know, I can attest to everything where, you know, I my background, I started in, in mortgages, right? And then I got into the stunt world. I found my love for creativity from fight choreography and just being on these sets. And I said, you know, I can bring this to, uh, I can have deeper meeting with this, right? And that's, you know, started Why Not You Media with Michael and Tony. And it's been, like you said, lucrative. It's been amazing meeting so many people. And because of social media, it's changed, you know, our lives. But I think a main point here is that if you're gonna go all in on something, understand that it's not an overnight success. Like people don't see the phone calls, the late night offices up till five o'clock in the morning, maybe sleeping three hours and then going and having to do it all over again. 
just because you're tracing not necessarily a dream, but I think it's also a quality of life doing what you love, right? That's something that you brought up. It's fulfillment. It's quality of life. Entrepreneurship can do that for you, but you have to understand those first three, four, five, maybe 10 years are going to constantly kick you in the face, punch you in the face, hit you in the gut, make you want to quit. But if you are able to continue go th going through it, and it's not just about working hard, it's about working correctly, yeah. right? Like doing the right work correctly. Because you could be working hard, but doing the wrong work. Everyone says work smart, not hard. But it's like, you can be what you think is working smart, but it's the wrong thing, right. you know? So it, it's I can just really attest to your story and it makes a lot of sense, but we could talk about our stories all day. I wanna get into, you know, marketing today, right? And this is something I know you and I could talk about for hours on end, but, I kind of want to piggyback off of a point that you made that when you were in LO, was marketing on social media was pushed upon you, mm -hmm. right? Today's world that we're in, it's still pushed upon people. And people tend to, what businesses too, have to almost be convinced that we're in a digital world. People's attention, when they take their phone out of their pocket, they are opening up social media applications. Whether it's text or phone call, that's different, but they're opening up either Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, Link. They're opening up something to find out what is going on in their world or their community. What are their friends doing? Oh, what's this new business piece of content? So I kind of want to just touch on the fact it's like, what have you seen change from when you started in marketing and social media to the, the degree it's at now? I don't think when I started two, three years ago, it was n like mandatory. Mm -hmm. It was still like you don't, uh, should I be honest? It was like, it's a great place to be, but I feel like th fast forward three years, like today, it's like if you're not on it, yeah. you're not, you don't exist. No, that's th it's, and that's a scary thing, right? Yeah. If like you're... If you're not doing any type of marketing on social media, you like you said it best, right? You were in LO, you left, came back, you thought all this business was gonna be there. You became irrelevant overnight. Irrelevant. If you stop producing content, right, and you just completely, let's say you go dark for months, a year, people are gonna move on to the next thing. Yeah. It's unfortunate because you know, sometimes you do need a break from social media. But it happened to me in yeah, six months. I yeah. was living La Vida Loca. I had a, a a big deal. I stopped coming up with creative things. I stopped posting. I was kind of resting on my laurels and being like, all right, I can take it easy now. I've yeah. been going so hard for 10 years. And dude, it ha like once I, you know when you're in momentum and your phone is ringing and people are constantly hitting you up for any reason, not yeah, your business, just, that, yeah, yeah. just to be in your circle. Mm -hmm. I disappeared for six months yeah. and now I'm back and I, you have to redo it. Yeah. And it, you can't, it sucks, but you can't let the momentum go. No, you cannot. Uh, and momentum is everything. And, oh, it's, and you, and like you said, you can feel momentum. Feel like it. there's a, there's an actual, there's like a different, like just energy around yeah. when you wake up in the morning, your phone going off, all these different, and it becomes you addictive. It you feel it, like yeah. you just, you know. And it's addictive. But let's talk about like right now, like the state of LOs and real estate agents, and, th and I'm gonna look at camera when I say this, is that like real estate agents and LOs, or just anyone in, in general that's in business, your market is not saturated. I think everyone's just like, well, everyone I know is on social media marketing now. Like, let me try something else. But I totally disagree. I think that where people tend to miss the boat is that just because other people are marketing on social media, the differentiating factor is you, the individual. Because the way you might say something, I always use the example. There are, let's call the United States, don't quote me on this, let's say there's 10,000 motivational speakers, right? There's a reason why each one of them has their own audience. Because maybe the way Tony Robbins says something yeah. doesn't connect with you, but the way Eric Thomas says it, it connects with you. And they're saying the same exact thing. But the way one person says something just resonates with you as a person. So I think, you know, what are some of the objections that you hear from LOs and real estate agents about starting that digital marketing, social media marketing journey? The funniest thing is you never hear an objection. Mm -hmm. You just see, ex you just hear excuses for mm -hmm. procrastination. Yep. And the thing is, it social media content, it, it comes with three parts, right? You have 
mindset, yep. strategy, yep. execution. Yep. And when people are coming in, they want to jump right into the execution, <laughs> turn on the camera, and get rolling. And the reality is, <laughs> one, there's a certain mindset. Yep. There's a lot of mindsets that you have no, to embrace. No, 100%. One is, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like your shit. Uh, yep. It's 50-50. Yeah. Okay? Uh, you, you um, another mindset is coming from a place that's not self-serving. So a lot of these people, they pick up the phone and are like, hey, I'm XYZ Mortgage Company, here's why I'm the best, right? So they go right into that round and they're just talking about their companies and their their company and their accolades um, when it's really about giving, yes. right? Uh, and another one is, oh, what's the ROI? I can't tell, like, this doesn't work like running ads. Building no. a personal brand is, a, first off, it's a necessity, but it's a long-term commitment. And yes. you know what's the ROI on? I heard Grand, Se Grand Cardone say this the other day. Like, what's the ROI on having an air conditioner in your office? What's the ROI on having a toilet in a bathroom? Mm -hmm. Yo, there's just some shit you need to do for business. Yes, right. Yes, so, this is one of them. This is one of them. In today's world, brand is built on social media. Well, it, yes, that's where the attention's at. Mm -hmm. So, and it's great that more and more people are are getting involved. I, th I think it's awesome. It's just, I think they're missing those two components. One is the mindset, right? Yep. So they try to play it safe with what they're talking about, not showing their unique uh, opinion because they don't want to piss off a certain group. Um, so again, getting the mindset right. And then you know, if you don't have a strategy, like what you're actually going to discuss, yep. then you're literally just getting on and doing these stupid song and dance trends, which drive me insane. Uh, and yeah. these, <laughs> the LOs that I speak to, and the realtors, I don't speak to 20 year olds, right? No. I speak, I'm speaking to 40, you know, 35 plus. Plus. And these are the people with the experience. These are the ones who actually have shit to teach. Yes. And nobody's hearing from you. No. Because if you sit down and have a conversation with them, they could talk for hours about their opinion on, you know, the programs, what's the state of the market right now, and yep. everything else. Whereas, these 20 year olds are just getting up doing some stupid trend, but they're actually being seen way more. So and maybe they're, they're the just deals. top of mind. I'm not even saying they're getting deals because I don't, I don't you know don't the know. answer. Yeah, we don't know but the But the fact is it's the, it's the people with the experience that aren't coming out. And mm -hmm. the reason is they're still in that place where, in that mindset of, I don't want to look stupid. I don't like the way I look. They're literally five-year-old boys and girls trapped in 60-year-old, 50-year-old bodies. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. It's a great it, way to put that's, it. That's exactly what it is. And they don't want to be judged and they don't, it, they can just go on and on in their head. I was at an advantage when I started doing social. Mm -hmm. I had spent the last two, three years doing what I call men's work. I was going to retreats. I was going to, you know, seminars. I was learning about integrity. I had male mentors. Yep. I was actually ready to show up as me yeah and i i feel terrible you know for the popular guy in high school and the hot girl mm -hmm. because they have taken that image of themselves into their into their later stages of life yeah and they still hold on to it well look i have wrinkles or my hair's not done yo <laughs> yeah i tell some people you are fucking beautiful you have a great like beautiful meaning your energy like, yes you're yeah. concentrating so much on if your hair the is out of things. place and, and whatnot. And I'm looking at you and I'm sensing amazing energy. And you're really being selfish because you do have so much to give and share with other people. And you're holding it in. Why? Well, I call it your ego. Yeah, I, I, and I love that. And I call it you're doing a disservice. When you have so much knowledge, you're actually doing a disservice to other people by not sharing. Yeah. And... I think a lot of people get caught on like the personal brand side of things, right? And this is, um, I'm gonna use a Gary Vee quote. So someone asked him during a keynote, you know, what are your thoughts on going off brand? And he literally said, that's bullshit. There's no such thing as off brand because what happens is that your brand is you. You are the brand. And we tell people all the time, if you're an LO, if you're a realtor, if you sell ice cream, if whatever you do, it does not, if you're a skateboarder, it does not matter. If you have, a tremendous love for something, right? And I and I this is something I, I just kind of smash down people's throats all the time. Is like 
If you are a Yankee fan, a die-hard Yankee fan, giant fan, does not matter. You can create a podcast or something around that love and passion, still promote that you're a realtor or a mortgage lender, and generate business for the service that you provide. Yeah. And the reason why is because people, it humanizes you. Because if you want to be known as just that realtor or that LO, it's great. But you add another element to it. P just because you're a Yankee fan, I know what you're might referring a to a Gary B. He's like he had this wine client, mm -hmm. and he searched uh, searched him like online and found out that he was a huge Chicago Bears fan, and he yeah. sent him a, a signed jersey. Right? Yeah. And they were able to connect on something personal. Yes. Right. And that's where people get lost. It's like you can still be what it is that you are and talk about other things. Yes, we're always gonna recommend you have to sprinkle in and bring in the educational side so that people know you know what you're talking about when it comes to real estate yes. or, or loan office or mortgages. But if you are that Chicago Bear fan, that Jet fan, you can create a podcast or something around, a segment around that and attract people. Like I'm a huge Jet fan, right? Been a Jet fan my entire life. And my mom introduced it to me as a young age. And something I did the other, uh, just yesterday was I did a story talking about the Jets, how great it was to wake up on a Monday morning knowing the Jets didn't get the shit kicked out of them at Lambeau, and they beat Aaron Rodgers. They beat him 27 to 10. And that video alone did 27 shares. I have no idea why. Right. But it showed me that, you know what, in the DMs I got and like just the conversations that it started, we're incredible because right. now I'm connecting with people on another level rather than just talking about marketing and social media all day. Yep. You know, I have to sprinkle that stuff in. I do love talking about that stuff, but I think people get so caught on the fact it's like, well, I'm a realtor, I have to talk about real estate. Right. Yeah. I'm a loan officer, I have to talk about loan officer yeah. stuff. No, you don't. Right. You could talk about whatever you want. If right. you love Pokemon, talk about Pokemon. Right. It, like seriously. I agree. And I think like. If people get over the fact that they have to, like they, like I love what you said, they, and I'm using a different term now, they box themselves into this little hole. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. I, Jay Shetty has a thing, and this is from years ago. He calls it the 75% rule. If it's 75% done, it's done. Because if you try to make it 100% finished, yeah. you're never gonna do it. Yeah. There's, you, you, you're, you're a perfectionist, cause paralysis. Yep. If it's 75% done, post a damn video. If it's 75% done, post a blog. If it's 75% done, you know, whatever it is. Yep, I agree. You know, it just post it, do it, stop waiting because you're going to miss this opportunity. Right. Like, think about what you've done, like your own personal brand, right? How much you posted, how much you've connected, how much you've messaged, how much you, like, I think you gotta talk about your Zoom, your Zoom catalog. That like that sense. to me, like every time you talk about that, and like, I'm one, like I love watching your content, I always watch it. It's like, you have this catalog of Zoom video yeah. that I probably, I don't even know how many hours you have. Thousands. But talk about that a little bit. Like just how everything is content. Yeah, so I, uh, and, and even for loan officers and realtors, I one of the first things I tell everybody to do right away, if you're starting to post on social at all, dude, put in a call to action. Yep. Make that call to action a 15-minute Zoom link. Yep. Always. And the reason is, especially as an LO and I was doing this, uh, yo, I don't like to meet with people face-to-face, -face, but doing somebody you know being involved in someone's purchase of a home is a big transaction yeah so it's way more intimate if you see me mm -hmm. maybe not face to face but uh, on camera or over zoom that's yeah. the next best best thing right yeah um so the real reason i did it was to connect with people and then mm. that got me into a to a point where yo i won't even take phone calls anymore yeah like you have to facetime me yeah and you can i drive everybody fucking insane but like if you don't <laughs> It's either a text or FaceTime. Yeah. And most people, though, it's a Zoom. Anything that has to do with a business uh, or any chance, it's always on Zoom. So not only because I get to connect with people, but I have thousands of hours of footage from everything I've done for the last two years. With valuable content. There is gold in so many of these But things. they go through it all. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't even attempted to go through it, but everything's there sitting on a hard drive 
Um, and yeah, like, because that is, if you don't want to sit and get in front of a camera, but you're filming your calls all day, chances are you're talking about topics that other people have. Yep. And that is content right there. You got yep. on a phone with a, bar, a borrower, they're asking about an escrow account or a 30 year versus a 15 year yep. or an arm. Okay, so now take that, cut it into the clips. You don't have to put the client's face or names. No. And then put it on social. And how about this? Even better that I used, that I used to do, but I didn't do it at, with video. Take that video and build it into your workflow. Yep. So I, I'm really big on, you know, here's certain steps that happen in the mortgage process. Yep. I don't want to talk to people, so I literally would send them pertinent information at the correct milestone. Mm -hmm. So, hey, inspection's just been ordered or appraisal's been ordered, here's what's happening next. And yep. follow it up with the video yep. that you just put up that says, what happens after an appraisal's ordered? Yeah. A couple of things are gonna happen. One, it's gonna come back at uh, above or at value. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Two, it's gonna come back less than value. Mm -hmm. Here's the options if that comes back. Yep. Here's how long it should take, five to seven days. Yep. This way I'm not getting a phone call every two days of the appraisal come back. And yep. I've set the proper expectations and answered the 90% of the questions, questions that get asked at that particular. And I think, and, and that's, a, it's, that's an amazing thing. You know, not many people would, you know, go out of their way to just hit that record button. Like to them, it's too much pressure, it's too much work. So let's stop. Yeah. That's why I do it. You ever hear like when athletes or people who go to the gym tell other people, hey, have everything ready to go? Yes. Because it makes it easier. Have your gym clothes there. Yes. Have it planned. Okay. Yes. So Zoom calls are always planned. Yep. Okay. Two. I hit one button, mm -hmm. all my lights go on. Yep. My mic is always on. Yep. My camera is plugged in to a charger that I never turn it off. Yep. And when I get on Zoom, it's auto recording. But that's incredible. You're you're set. You I sit, don't boom. have to remember anything. to do anything. But people don't even want to do that part. And that's on them. And I think also what causes a lot of paralysis where people like stops people is that they post and you, I think you did a video about this a while ago, and we, we've spoken about it a bunch, is that people get so caught on metric. It's like, oh, I didn't get 10 million views. Dude, when, I started, so when I started putting out content, I did it for three months, I didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. And then I started going to places and people would call me the monk. Yeah. And I'm like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where people started hitting me up and they're like, I'll f I follow you all the time. I'm ready to buy a house or something. And I'm like, but this person never liked, commented, or follow, or like, I have no idea who you are. You're telling me you've been following me? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I've never, like. You never I've interacted. Never, you never interacted. Yep. And it, this was the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around. 95% of people who have ever worked with me or purchased from me have never liked, commented, or shared any of my shit. And that is insane because we call them, and why don't you mean the mindless scroller, right? People that just scroll to see what others are doing, and they never comment, I like, call them or spectators. Anything. Yeah, so we call them the mindless scroll. So it's like they're just scrolling, watching, looking, and just keeping tabs on people, right? But we have a, our like motto or our mantra is way beyond marketing. Because the way marketing works, and especially social media, and this is where I think people get lost, is they expect to put out content and immediately get a deal in the DM. Hey, I want you to sell my home. Right. Hey, can I use you to buy, I wanna go buy a house. Hey, can you do my loan? Can right. you They're looking at this as a, what do you call it? Like a sales platform and it's not. It's, it's a it's, social it's a platform. platform. Nobody's coming on here to buy. No. Buying becomes a byproduct of people just knowing and liking you. Yes, it's and trusting, yes, right? yes, like knowing and trust, right? And we tell people all the time, this is usually how social media will work. You put out tons of content, someone sees you, right? They might not necessarily need your service or your product, but they know someone in their network that can utilize it. They then share your content or just call up their buddy Johnny and say, hey Johnny, I got this guy, I think you should look, check him out. He's the person you should use to get your loan yeah. or buy your house, right? He's also, he's a Yankee fan too, he has great content. That guy goes, oh, I love this guy. He gives him a call, right? He calls up the, the, the LO or the real estate agent that he sees or the person, whatever industry that they're in, and they say, hey, um, I, you know, I was referred to you by my buddy Johnny. I would love to 
you know, use your services or buy your products, whatever it is. And some, most of the time, like eight out of 10 times, that person doesn't even mention social media. Yeah. But guess where the lead came from? Yeah. Social media, because you're front and center putting out content because it is no one's job to wake up tomorrow and remember what you do for a living. Yep. And you have to be putting out this content because like you said, you walk into different places, restaurants, bars, meetings, wherever, and people now all of a sudden recognize you. That's yeah, the was, power of crazy. brand. Yeah. But that's the power of brand. There's no like, we always get asked, oh, what's the metric you guys can put on me for, like give me a report on my brand. I can't give that to you. Now here's what I tell everybody. I, first off, I asked them, how do they plan on measuring my success? Yeah. And if they hit me up and they're like, well, I want at least one deal. Okay, that's, I can't promise that. Follows, like, so can't promise any of that. Yeah. I, I can't. No, there's no guarantee. It's gonna, there's so many factors that come into play. How often are you posting? Mm -hmm. Is your content any good? Like, yeah. there's a number of things that come into yeah. play. But here's how I measure success. I tell every client. If you want to know my definition is, how many people are hitting me up mm -hmm. to ask me any question yes at all yes dude where did you get that hat yeah bro where did you take your daughter where were you this week uh, all any type of communication where people are hitting me up to ask me a question that's how i feel momentum yes i agree i agree entirely because they see you as an authoritative figure of someone that they want to ask something of or they just see you as somebody that they want in their circle yeah right like i like this person and I want them in my circle. And that goes back though to just you like, we, we could talk about the nuances such as like documenting your life, documenting what you're doing, showcasing, doing this, doing that. But people, it all comes back. And I love that you brought up mindset. The mindset is I think one of the biggest hurdles for people to make to break through in order to just do. And if you don't do, you just will never do. And then you, tra you, you know, go 10 years down the line and you watch all the people that we're doing and you're like, damn, I had my opportunity. I always say that about Vine. I got the story all the time. If my college roommates watch this, they would probably be like, dude, shut up about this already. Back in college, Vine comes out uh, freshman year of college and we started a Vine. Five, it's called Five Guys, Twitters, and Vines, okay? Well, I want this to be my, my first time I do a shot. I bought this alcohol <laughs> to get a... Uh, my clients okay. calmer. Uh -huh. And I was just like, you know what? I haven't done one yet. Go for it. So while he's opening up uh, this, what is this, tequila? De Leon? <laughs> Struggling a moment over it. Wait, hold on. Oh, rip the thing. So while you're, take, you're ripping this, the plastic off, I'll tell you the, we'll do it after. I'll tell you the story. So we started Five Guys Twitters and Vines. Freshman year, we start doing like, it was six second video, so you had to be extremely creative. We were doing these crazy cuts, throwing footballs across dorm rooms, looking like we were catching it with one hand, like literally doing priming stuff, like having people stand in the back of the frame you know, to, because when people would comment, they'd be like, yo, what's that guy doing back there? Purposely stuff. And I was just like, you know, we went home for December. We grew 2,500 followers in like a month and a half on Vine. And my buddy Ryan that ran the page, you know, was great at just engaging with people. We started getting traction, and I knew we started getting traction because people started commenting about which guy they liked the best. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's funny, he's cool, blah, 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 blah. And I, in that moment, I was just like, we came back from December break, and that's what killed us, right? We had a month off from school. And I was like, yo, when we get back to school, we gotta go right back at it. You know, things happen, new year, everyone wants to go out, whatever. But I was just like, we were onto something that early on. And it's like, if we just kept doing, I don't even know where we would have been, yeah. right? We, like we had a great name, Five Guys. Well, I, actually, I actually think that you should bring back your strategy for six seconds. Yeah. Because if you could make interesting videos for six seconds, seven seconds, oh. I think that's a perfect amount of time. No, it is. I, and I think, but you know what it is, is people get so caught on, like I, I hate scrolling through like TikTok and like Instagram and, and YouTube. And it's like, the algorithm now wants 33 yeah. second videos. It's like, dude, clickbait first off. Second of all, you do not know what the algorithm wants. Everyone is trying to beat the algorithm, right? See, but that was my thing. Yeah. I, and I used to tell people this. I never got in this for follower count. No. So when you come to me, all I could do is share with you what worked for me, how I built a business. Yes. And this is how I did it. 
I was never a growth coach. No. I never said to anyone, I know how to get to 100,000 followers. No. I was making money at 1,500 followers. Yeah. The, the, the byproduct was followers coming from me doing what I was doing, but yep. I never set out for a large follower count. No. If you're consistent, things happen. Right. I, I, I was never. I posted what I wanted to post, when I wanted to post. I yeah. never listened to anything that the algorithm was telling me because I didn't care. There are people, and this is a crazy thing, people that, <laughs> there's people that have millions of followers that do not make nearly as much money as people I know that have like yeah. seven, 7,500, no 10,000, there's nothing. Unless like, and those people with a million followers, some of them we don't know how we got them, but like, you all of a sudden, their, their strategy to asking your community to buy something from you, yeah. right? You have to build, like, give, 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 and then eventually you get to a point where you don't even have to ask. You're just saying, hey guys, I'm coming out with this, would love for you to support. Right. And then you know if you have a strong community. It always goes back to that story of that woman that had like over a million followers. She tried to release a uh, fashion line. She sold like eight shirts. Yeah. Why? She didn't have a she loyal. Didn't have a, she didn't have a loyal community. Yeah. She didn't dive deeper. She didn't actually probably engage with those that actually supported her. Yeah. And that, we can get into like answering comments and all these different things, but I think really the moral of the story here is no matter what industry that you're in, if it's a loan officer, if you're a realtor, if you, I brought up, if you sell ice cream, it doesn't matter what you do. Content is a necessity. I'll tell you what. It's not even, but what's your alternative? You wanna go cold call? Go cold call. Yeah. You wanna beg people to take them out to lunch? You wanna cater open houses? What is your plan? Just, that's all it is. No, yeah. Guys, content doesn't, I, I found that this worked for me. Yeah. I think it works for a lot of people. What is your alternative? What's your plan? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna start texting people. Oh, got it, so you haven't, Engage with them the last year because you've been so fucking busy. So now yep. you're reaching out. They probably have a hundred people doing the same. Doing a bullshit text to somebody. Yeah. Do you even have good follow up on the text messages? Like if okay, if texting is going to be your your uh, lead gen, your lead gen. Yeah. Right. How good of a follow up are you giving up after one text? Are you sending them like? Yeah, it, cause, and and that's a crazy thing. It's like kind of like we'll hit on this and we can kind of close up is that so like when we run paid advertisement campaigns right for different uh clientele we get the i guess the privilege of seeing underneath the hood mm -hmm. because a lot of businesses even individuals right don't flow even is disgusting they don't even They're understand not existent, their, right? not existent and they don't understand their own sales process yeah. because what happens and i see this as a blessing because we've had this happen to us you know full you know, transparency, is where you start making a bunch of money and you think, oh, I'm making all this money, right? You're making 10, 15, 20,000 dollars a month. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is never gonna end. Yeah. And then it slows down. Yeah. And all of a sudden it makes you take a step back and take a look at your landscape and go, whoa, my systems are so bad. And we've seen that happen with so many clientele, those clients yeah. of ours, where they're making, they're racking in money all of a sudden we start running ads, we overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. They can't even deal with the leads coming in because guess what? They were making so much money that they didn't even understand their own sales process and how they actually nurture Dude, these I, companies. I've already tried businesses. that route, telling people, you come to me as an LO and you go, my expectation is uh, leads or I want to close a deal. Okay, so money is your biggest thing right now. Yeah. Great, why are we, why are we focusing on social? This is a long game. Yeah. What plan do you have to go get business from your past database? Yep. That's the low-hanging fruit. You want yeah. immediate money. Yeah. Why are you coming to me for social? Let's work your book of business. Yeah. But they know they need social. Yes. It's, it's just insane. It's like, and then on top of that, though, people also are always looking at social media as, the, oh, I can get in front of new people. It's not just about new people. It's about the people that know you as well because you want them to constantly see you. Like... I want to be known as the person to reach out to when it comes to marketing their service or their product. You don't want them to forget what you do. Right. Because, I, and I use this story all the time, if you ask realtors, loan officers, or whoever, when they go to a family barbecue, I bet you always somebody. there's always someone in their family that use someone else that utilizes, th that offers their service, and the reason why is because they said, I forgot that you do it. Yep.
Is it their job to remember? Absolutely not. They have a million things going on in their own life, whether it's death, sickness, their own job, their own worries, their own anxieties, their own fears, their own happiness. People are on social. 90-year-old grandparents are. Be on social media, put it out there, but don't get into the trap of just doing it to do it. Do it with intent. Do it with adding value. Give, 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 and you're gonna start seeing that reciprocate. It might take time. Like you said, it's a long-term game. Yeah. It might take five, 10 years. And the longer you take to get into the game, the harder it's going oh, that to door, be. That, yeah. that door starts to slowly yeah. shut. But you know what? If you get into it and you stay consistent and just start putting out content over and over and over again, you are one video away from changing your entire life. Great. But guys, I want to thank, thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming on. Thought you got. To I hope you got tons of value out of this. Once again, Mario the Monk Trotta, Francis Volpe. Thank you for tuning in to Front and Center.